Welcome, audience members. You are now entering the Parliament of the Daleks, a Doctor Who podcast focusing on the toys, action figures, and merchandise from the past, present, and future of our favorite sci-fi franchise. I'm your Dalek fanatic host, Wade, joined by figure expert Alex and Jack, and this is our second episode for the series. We'll be taking a look at character options 5.5-inch figures, multi-packs, RCs, and playsets from 2006 on this episode, Remotely Interesting Toys. Let's travel back once again to 2006 and start off our journey looking at some of the multi-packs that we first got in the Doctor Who toy line. Alex, you are our figure expert. What did Character Options release during this year? So to start off with March of 2006, we got an RC Dalek uh, for the first time single pack rather than in any form of battle pack. Um, as well as a 10th Doctor and K9 pack, which featured an RC K9 and a standard brown suit 10th Doctor, which we have already discussed before. Um, both of these sets retailed for £16.99 each. And as well as that, we also saw the release of the TARDIS playset, which, as Doctor Who toy collectors, we know is one of the most iconic and ginormous sets. Um, that has ever been released and has tons of electronic features, including lights and sound effects. Yeah, that is one of the greatest toys of all time. Now, did either of you have any of this standard release radio control Daleks? Um, what about you, Jack? I remember all I remember is having a green base and it really confused me as a kid because I don't remember the Daleks. I didn't remember the Daleks ever having green bases. Yeah, and that was another thing I wanted to ask too. Does anyone officially know if this one was cast in different colors by any chance? If it was a lighter shade of bronze and gold or anything like that? Because I, I have heard of the more green, gray colored base before and it not being black. Um, have you heard anything about that, Alex? Well, in terms of the bases on these ones, they're sort of like a metallic-y, greeny, bronze sort of color. And I don't know really why they are that color, but I guess it's because of, yet again, character options not having any real reference material for it. And in terms of the bronze on this Dalek, it's kind of interesting. Rather like the ones released in the battle packs, actually, it's sort of like a slightly reddish bronze, if that makes sense. It's sort of like a pinkish sort of hue in it it looks pretty visually interesting uh is this the figure that you have alex um no it's not but i do have the ones from the battle packs but yeah i never got the uh single release yeah i'd be curious if it might be in different shades or anything like that um i do not have this figure i rarely see this thing pop up in america do i don't think i'll get it i do remember it having like a almost like glittery effect to it like the metallic paint just looked like bronze with glitter mixed in you think it was maybe a lot brighter of a bronze with metallic flex by any chance i wouldn't remember i wouldn't be able to say it's looking at the photos and almost comparing the two that there does look like there might be a difference i'm not 100 percent sure it could be lighting for all i know but it does look like um in the rc battle pack that bronze dalek does look significantly darker but so that one's just a pretty standard remote control dalek this next pack however this is another one of those fan favorites in the community and i hear a lot of stories of a lot of kids and collectors who got this pack back in the day um jack did you have the doctor and remote controlled canine yeah i did i remember woolworths was the one that i got this from I remember my mum taking me there. Surprising me, I didn't know we were going there, but I remember it's one of my earliest memories. They're saying, "Oh, we're just going to go to the shop, you know, just say like Asda or Tesco's or something," and then us going to Woolworths and her saying, "You know, pick what you want." That's really cool, and I imagine that remote-controlled canine was pretty awesome, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm a canine simp. So I loved it as a kid. It looks pretty cool. Now, this canine, it, does it have the pop-off panel or no? I want to say it's glued in. Yeah, it's glued in. Isn't the pop-off panel for the battery compartment on this one? Yes, it is. Oh, it is? Not the bottom? No, it's not on the bottom, because that's where the wheels are. So yeah, the panel is for the batteries on this one. Oh, okay. That's pretty smart then. I don't have this figure or this pack. I've seen it pop up occasionally in the United States, but people often want like 40, 50 bucks for it. So I've, I've never been too keen on spending that much for it, but it does seem like a lot of people have fun memories with this. Did you have this set, Alex? Um, no, I don't. And 
kind of sad actually. I, I'd kind of like the RC K9 to be honest. It's um, one that's always interested me. But yeah, I never got it. But it's kind of interesting because the entire K9 sculpt is much bigger. It's sort of a tad larger than the uh, standard figure. And um, yeah, I only know about the battery compartment because of Vote Saxon 07's review on the set. That's how I know of that little tidbit of information. Never owned it. It's a bit of a shame, but one day I might get it. Yeah, I'm about the same. I need to get it soon. Now, this next set, however, this is the first place that Character Options made, and holy cow, did they knock it out of the park. It is the TARDIS playset. This one is considered to be one of the greatest Doctor Who toys in existence. Jack, did you have this wonderful toy? I did. I remember looking through, like, the Argos catalog or something when I was little. And like showing it to mum like it was the best thing ever. Like, wow, can I, I want this, I want this, I want this. And she's like, oh, maybe one day. And then I remember going to school and then coming in and it being set up in my nan's living room. And it had like all the figures I already had. She had posed in it for me. I remember like jumping through the roof and like I was so excited. But then, and then it proves how much of like a little um, turd I was as a kid. Uh, the first thing I said was, wow, it's so cool. Thank you. But you put the walls on back to front. So you had the vortex inside the TARDIS? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny, though. Did the electronics work well for you and the sound effects? Yeah. I didn't see... I didn't know. As much as I looked at, in, at it in the Argos catalog, I wasn't... I was just more looking at the pictures and actually reading what it featured. So then when I found out, oh, it made noises, the rotor went up and down, I was like, you know, even more happier than I was before. It honestly looks really cool. And I I bet that thing was filled with hours of play. Yes. Uh, Alex, did you have this set? Oh, of course I did. Um, it was so good. Um, first thing I will say, though, is since I don't think we'll cover this play set again on the podcast, is that there were some production changes made to it throughout the years. Uh, the original release started out with sort of green transparent plastic on the console and a white hat stand. But um, a year or so later, these things were revised and changed so the plastic on the um console sort of standard translucent plastic rather like the time rotor and uh, the hat stand was changed to sort of like a dark tan color not like a major variation but it's i mean that happened you forgot to say that you know the panels in the floor that you can lift up were changed from solid gray plastic to green oh were they yeah all right okay yeah i remember that actually yeah so yeah that that's difference as well uh that was changed so yeah there's a few slight changes in production but then it's not like documented as like an official release or change uh so i got one of the later versions because i've got into the show in 2009 so i think my dad got my one um in forbidden planet basically on clearance really it was cheaper it was like 20 pounds or something that's one heck of a deal because they were, i think they were basically trying to get rid of them to replace them with the matt smith ones yeah that was pretty cool and i I've, my memory is so bad with this stuff but it's honestly i think it's one of the first things i got out of the entire like figure line mostly but i have I have memories like my grandparents constructing it with me so i like build it in like their living room but i could be like completely making that up but i seem to remember that but honestly yeah it was such a delight to have that set because like it the light and sounds obviously and the moving time rotor was just tantalizing as a child it's like such an awesome feature it's it's incredible and even see this day i still look at it and just go wow that is incredible it has so many features like you know the floor panels the opening doors of the tardis police box you could pop up the panel on the console oh yeah that was so good you could open that panel up. honestly it was such a cool set and the tardis doors um yeah they're based off the uh, tardis money bank and the reason this was was because character options said about the money bank that if you wanted a tardis police box to go over your figures you'd have to get the money bank. So at this point in time, that was basically your standard police box mold until our character changed their mind and you know saw money in their eyes and went, actually, we could do a proper flight control TARDIS. So that happened eventually. But at this point in time, wasn't planned. So it's why it's the money box mold on the front. I may open out the wrong way. Oh, yeah, huh? It opened up outwards. Mm -hmm. Was this pretty easy to get? post 2010 or did it start to get really tricky to find whether inbox or loose or complete or has it always been for you guys in the uk one of the easiest doctor who things to acquire for a while they were everywhere like you literally couldn't throw a stone without hitting one but then when they started phasing out tenant stuff to matt smith they slowly slowly started rising on ebay they'd go from like say 35 to 45 and then 
you know, a few months later, they'd be at 50. And I think now they're up to like 85 pounds. Yeah, they've slowly increased in value over time. Do you want to know how much it cost the United States back in 2006? Um, if I could have even afforded this back in the day, it would have cost 70 bucks. No, that's insane. Oh, I, there was no way I could have gotten this as a kid back in the day. And even then, it's still kind of pricey to get now. Everyone in the US, even with the... Um, Later on, when they re-released it through Underground Toys, it was 150 retail, I believe. And everyone now wants 200 to 400. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but you're getting one for free. I am, thanks to Jack, because he is such a kind soul. And he found me a 10th Doctor TARDIS console, which, it, oh man, I cannot wait to get that thing in the mail and put it together. It's going to be incredible. I'm going to have to do a whole Instagram live for that, huh? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, do like a build on live stream that would be pretty cool but yeah i is it fair to say that this is one of the greatest doctor who toys of all time top five top ten i don't know i'm biased now i'm very biased but i would say purely as a feat of engineering for a low budget tv show to get a place set like this it has to be the greatest doctor who toy ever made i would agree with that because unlike other play sets like the 11th Doctor's one and the time zone play sets they did in the future, where it's just like mostly card. With this, the card was actually used in a way that actually felt natural and not forced out of like budgetary constraints. You know if this was made these days, the uh, coral pillars would be card. Yeah, yeah, it definitely would be. Yeah, easily. They just fall apart. Paper craft. <laughs> but honestly, this playset honestly has so many brilliant childhood memories associated with it. It's honestly fantastic. Because it's just such a core part of being a kid with Doctor Who toys, really, is, you know, you have the interior of the TARDIS and, you know, anything can happen in there. It's sort of brought a lot of imaginative play, I think. And honestly, it's just the staple thing you've got to have. Mm -hmm. I agree with that statement. And it really is. 15 years later, still one of the best Doctor Who toys ever made. You just cannot deny its awesomeness. So looking at June of 2006... They made another one of those Dalek battle packs. Alex, what's different about this one? Well, the only difference with this particular battle pack is that it now features a 10th Doctor figure in his brown suit in the set. But apart from that, I believe everything else is exactly the same. However, there might be some changes to the Daleks in that the overall quality of the remote control features potentially from our theories might have been improved at this point due to the lack of rushed nature behind its release yeah overall honestly i think i still kind of prefer the ninth doctor one over this version but this one still leaps and bounds better than the one packed with rose jack was this the version you might have had or anything like that i'm thinking based on sort of where i got into the show it's more likely that this is the one i got because i didn't even know eccleston existed you know for the first few months i was into doctor who and i definitely remember owning a pack like this and in terms of rareness is it fair to say that this is a little more less common than the ninth doctor or rose battle packs uh, i'd say so just about because i very rarely see this one especially you know in the packaging like you know mint in box anywhere really it's pretty hard to come by i think yeah and then there oddly enough there's another <laughs> one of these battle packs coming up um a little bit later in this episode although i have to ask why do you think they renamed it mini rc dalek battle pack i don't know why they just needed to change the name all of a sudden it's like okay well i think it's because of the uh, 12 inch daleks being out as well so i assume they thought like the 12 inch ones were like the regular size ones and the five inch ones were like the mini daleks as it were i guess that would make sense so uh past june of 2006 what do we have coming up next alex so for august of 2006 we have the RC Dalek Sec, and we have a reissue of the 10th Doctor and K9 RC pack, but the 10th Doctor now features his trench coat, and we have the RC Dalek Battle Pack, however, now has the Cyber Leader figure included that has a removable chest panel and an EMP device. So, this Dalek Sec, um, this is the only time it was released, right? They never brought it back or did any production runs. Is this one one of the harder to get remote controlled figures? Um, I'm not too sure. I seem to see it on eBay every now and again. It's not like impossible to find. However, the version that I've bought was quite different to the one you usually see with the window in the box. Mine doesn't have a window. It's just a solid like card box 
with picture of Dalek Sec on the front of it. So there was like a production change there in 2006. So I'm not too sure what was on with that, but that was a thing. And unfortunately, the moment I get my RC Dalek Sec out of the box, it um, put the batteries in and everything, and um, it doesn't work. The One of the wheels malfunctioned, so happy days. Oh, that's a bummer. Jack, do you remember seeing this one as a kid? I don't, to be honest. I remember my neighbor, Charlie, having one, but I remember it broke. So we decided to use like this old fashioned grass flattener thing. It was like a big giant concrete cylinder attached to a big metal handle. So we just rolled it over and smashed it into pieces. So yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, as far as we got with that figure. <laughs> That's one way to play with it, I suppose. I'm a sadistic <laughs> child. Oh, crazy. Meanwhile, mine's just in it, mint in its box still because I bought mine in like 2018. That's cool that you have a variant box though. You'll have to post some photos of that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Put it on the Parliament of the Daleks Instagram page. Watch out guys, it's gonna happen. So did any of you guys remember seeing the variant for the RC K9 and Doctor? Mm-hmm. Or not really? I had this one, could be wrong, but I feel like yet again, we got it from Asda's. So I don't know who bought me it this time, but I remember getting it. I remember loving it. And I remember going straight home and watching School Reunion on DVD from the, um, I could be wrong, but I feel like at that time, were they doing that pack where they were releasing all of the old episodes on magazine week by week? Um, maybe. I'm not too sure. I don't remember. Well, I had, whatever it was, I had it on DVD. I remember going home and watching School Reunion whilst, you know, remote control driving canine around the living room. Nice. That's pretty cool. And this one, I believe, is the more common between the two, right? Since this was the later release? Maybe. I'm not too sure. I've not looked. Um, But off the top of my head, it's actually the rarer one, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. Oh, is it really? I feel like I come across this one more in America than I do the other one. I don't know. I'd say pretty equal, I suppose. We sort of see them equally as often, I think. Now, this next mini RC Dalek battle pack, I don't have the Daleks, but I do have that Cyberman. And I am fortunate enough to still have his Cyber logo. I just never got the EMP bomb. I got the uh, Cyber Leader and I have the EMP, but I don't have the uh, chest panel. That EMP bomb looks like is the easiest thing to lose ever even compared to a sonic screwdriver at least you can find the silver against the carpet or something this thing looks like it'll bounce off the tile and into a void like it's ridiculous yeah i've come close to losing it a couple of times actually as a kid like it's just yeah it's not like the best accessory because you can't really stand it up or anything it sort of rolls about and he can't even really hold it either but it's like why did they include that with this figure and not like i don't know why not just make a preacher figure or something with that EMP bomb or Mickey Smith, but <laughs> with the Cyberman with his own demise, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. I love the figure and the removable chess piece. Jack, do you have this figure? Yeah, this is one of the only figures I actually own from this era. I think it's sitting on my 12th Doctor shelf right now, though, because a uh, message to Alduar you still haven't made a five inch Nightmare and Silver Cyberman. But, um, yeah, I did. I had this one. I remember, like you two are both saying, I instantly lost the uh, EMP device, and we looked everywhere for it, but couldn't find it. So, but yeah, it's one of my favorite figures. Even to this day, I love that you can remove the chest. It's weird color. It's like bright blue on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun figure. It's fun. It is fun. It, It does make me wish that they incorporated that feature into the at least another variant of Cyberman or something like that. That would have been pretty cool to have the removable chest panel or, I don't know, something to add a little bit more play variety. But I guess I am thankful on the other half that they didn't do that because there would be an awful lot of Cybermen on eBay mm. without their chest panels. <laughs> Another thing that Cyber Leader has is a pointing finger hand. Which yeah, is- Oh, does. I was just going to say that. I love his finger. Yep, uh, on my display right now, I actually have him with his arm up in the air and he's like pointing at like midair. It's really cool. So coming up next, we have the first exclusives for multi-packs in the lines. Which ones do we have coming up, Alex? So first release uh, was a Woolworths exclusive in September 2006, which was a six-figure pack which featured the Ninth Doctor, K9, Dalek Sec. However, this Dalek Sec is interesting because it's the RC mold, but the electronics have been taken out of it and the base is non-electronic and has the standard wheels that we sort of are used to and includes the Tenth Doctor, Rose Tyler with her bleach blonde hair again for some reason, and the Moxa Balhoon, however, he is now the sort of darker, slightly purpley blue variant. And there was another release of this, which featured the 
featured Cassandra instead of the Ninth Doctor. Now, is that technically a variant, or were both of these sets released at the same time? Like, here you have two different choices. Do you want another Doctor, or do you want Cassandra? I think they're released at the same time, by the looks of things. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that they even did that slight variation, really. Yeah, just swapping out one figure, it's kind of odd. Do I Did either of you have one of these multi-packs, or know of someone that might have had this? It seems like... They're a little bit trickier to come by these days. I didn't. I didn't know anyone that had these. What do you guys think about the dark blue Moxa Balhoon variant? Do you prefer that one over the lighter blue or? Yeah, I do. I personally like the lighter blue. I won't lie. I like the darker blue. I think the lighter blue is more screen accurate, but on an aesthetic level, I prefer the darker. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's about it. These were just repacks, but like Alex said, that Dalek sec is pretty unique. It is a very weird variant. It's a very tricky one to get to you don't really see him loose because oftentimes people either switch out parts or swap them or anything like that in general it's sort of hard to identify if you wanted to buy it because you've got to see the base of it with the wheels to know that it's the right one and not an rc one and was it that greenish base too uh, i believe it was a black base like most of the dalek sec releases oh, okay i was gonna say it looked weird having the green green colored base and having a whole black top over it these two woolworths exclusives they were pretty much just repacks all across the board. I don't know why they have Bleach Blonde Rose, considering they already had the fix-up from Wave 1, but she's there nonetheless. Probably gotta make it cheap. Which one would you have bought back in the day? Would you have gone for the one with Cassandra or the Ninth Doctor? I think as a kid, I would have gone with the one with Cassandra in it, but... That's because as a kid, I sort of wanted variety in characters, but if it was me now, I'd probably go with the Ninth Doctor. Which one do you think might be rarer? Or less common? Once again, I don't really know. <laughs> How much do they cost nowadays in the UK? What do they go for? Because I could get this in America right now for about 70 to 100 bucks. That's extortion. Yeah, I, it is. <laughs> not saying I'd pay those prices, but... That is extortionate. Not even that great of figures, and no. look at how much it costs. Uh, look at on eBay right now for 40 pounds. Ah, oh, jeez. That's... That's ridiculous. These these prices need to come down in America. No one's going to pay that. Or move to the UK. Yeah, that's what I do. I need to do that too. Yeah, on the whole, <laughs> it seems that £40 is sort of the average price on eBay nowadays for this set. So that's literally over 15 years. It's gone up by £10. Talk about investing, right? Stonks. Big money, big profit. <laughs> so those ones may not have been the most exciting multi-packs release, but this... Next and last one is probably, I'd argue, one of the coolest ones Character Options has made to date. What do we have coming up, Alex? So this set is the Cyber Controller and Guard set, which featured two Cybermen, the Cyber Controller and his throne, which is a great set. And also, yeah, again, like quite a few of these uh, 2006 releases, had a change its production run in which the early ones had Cybermen without their arm guns and later ones had them with the arm guns, which obviously isn't accurate to the Age of Steel but it's um i can confirm that that is a variant set because um that's the set i got when i got my set it came with cybermen with the arm guns on See, the one that i got and i got it loose but from the original owner it was the unfortunately i am missing one of the cybermen guards but it did not have the arm guns on either of them and i know that because he had photos of it but he only sent me the one cyberman jack was this a set that you had as a kid i did i remember my mom got this one for me and um it must have been the one with the arm guns because i never as far as i remember got a single pack of the cyberman with the arm guns so but i had ones in my collection so it must have come from this set but yeah i love this set the cyber controller scared the pants off me as a kid so he really ever got, you know, played with. He was facing the corner. And um, I used this throne for everything. It was like Bill Gatz from Ben 10's throne, Megatron's throne. Uh, I loved it. I love that you could plug in the, um, like, cables to the cyber controller's chest. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, I love that feature. Those rubber cables work really, really well with this set. Another thing I wanted to ask too, Alex, was this came out in October of 2006. How much did this pack retail for uh, most likely well we don't really know in that um the prices for quite a few of these releases are kind of hard to find and this is really the first one we've really stumbled upon and gone we do not know the price for this but we've estimated it was probably somewhere in the region of 30 pounds give or take probably five pounds or so it could have been either 24.99 or most likely 29.99 yeah i'd agree with that that's so yeah roughly in that area how much were the six packs 
as well. Uh, the six packs were £29.99. Yeah, so overall, all across the board, the prices were pretty fair on these sets. It, at least to me, it looks like you got your money's worth, especially out of this set. I mean, those rubber wires, for such a simple little toy thing, it's so cool to just play around with and have the cyber controller just rip them out with his arms and have him wa walking up, rising out of the chair. This overall is a really cool set. Even, like, visually on display, it looks incredible. It really does. And yeah, the uh, rubber tubes on it are just... It's such a simple yet effective feature, really. And I just remember playing with that as a kid a lot, and it was so cool. The only thing I sort of would have a minor complaint about is the fact that the uh, cyber controller doesn't really sit in his throne, like, perfectly. No, he squats. <laughs> yeah, that's just due to the articulation on that figure, and uh, the tubes hold him in. That's really the important thing. So the tubes sort of serve the function in that way as well. They actually keep him in place. Now, I remember hearing a rumor that at one point character options considered including sound effects or lights in this set. How likely true is it that they would have done that for this? Honestly, I don't know. But given that it is basically a hollow rotorcast piece, there's definitely room for electronics in there. And I think it's definitely something that they could have done if they wanted to do it. Do you think it would have been cool to have the cyber controller with light up eyes? Definitely. That would have been awesome. But I don't know how easy that would have been for them back then, really. Might have been a little bit out of their uh, reach, really. It could have been, but it could have been in the realm of possibilities. We're not entirely sure. But so, yeah, that just about covers everything from 2006 for the figures and multi-packs and play sets, but if you were to walk into a Woolworths or an Asda or any place and your mom said you could pick one toy to buy, which one are you guys shooting for? We'll go for you, Jack. Definitely the Cyber Controller Throne because it's one of the only ones I wish I still had to this day because I want this probably covered in red pen somewhere, glitter. So yeah, the Cyber Controller on each screen. So you'd go, what would you go for as a kid and what would you go for as an adult? Oh, as a kid, probably <laughs> K9. Because I was completely biased, and as an adult, prone, I would say. Those are some pretty good choices. What about you, Alex? Uh, I'd say the Cyber Throne, again. Probably both as a kid and an adult. Although, out of things that I don't own now, I'd probably go for the RCK9, because that's really anything that's a major difference that I don't have. Yeah, this one's a bit tricky for me, I can't lie, because even though I was a kid and I always wanted that TARDIS place that I've probably would have easily gone for that if I had to pick something, but given that that was, oh, I don't know, slightly out of the price range. Yeah, that's the thing. It really, with the TARDIS playset, as a kid, you could never choose it. You could always just sell your parents that you wanted it, but they'd say no. <laughs> that's pretty much how it works. Yeah. It's like that sort of thing that you get as like a birthday or Christmas present or a special surprise of some sort when your parents choose to buy it for you rather than you choosing it to buy it, if that makes sense. But if it's still like if it's kids me's sort of choice, then yeah, I'd probably go to the TARDIS playset if I knew my parents would say yes to it. But you know, as a kid, you're sort of a bit savvy, and you go, they probably wouldn't in this instance for for whatever reason. So you sort of go with something a little cheaper, like the Cyber Controller set. Yeah, as a kid in an imaginary world, I would have easily picked the TARDIS playset. But on the other hand, as an adult who just got this set about a year ago, I have to say I really do love the Cyber Throne and Guards. That three pack is super duper cool. It's beautiful on display. I love having it in my IKEA cabinet surrounded by Cybermen uh, throughout all different eras for my little Cyberman focus I got it going on. Overall, heck, it even looked cool on a desk. It's also really nicely displayed in the packaging as well. It looks amazing in the package. That's what we forgot to say too. It looks insanely cool. But yeah, overall, I'd easily pick the Cyber Controller with his guards on the Cyber Throne. That one, even 15 years later, Looks great on display. It'd look good on a desk or something or at the workplace. It's really cool set and has a lot of cool memories with wanting it. And just getting it last year, I'm super duper happy to have it. Even though this was a shorter episode, um, it was great to cover over these figures and to kind of do a trip down memory lane. And that just about concludes it for the figure range from 2006. Overall, what's your guys' thoughts on this year? A lot of um, batteries <laughs> would be needed. But uh, yeah, it's really sort of makes you miss these days. It makes you miss the sort of variety they ha you had on offer back in the golden era. What about you, Alex? Yeah, I'd agree with what Jack says, really, in that um, we obviously got so many electronic 
characters and play sets in this particular year we had all the rc daleks and the tardis play set and yeah it makes you sort of wish that we had these sorts of things now really and it's a shame because it all sort of died out really after 2010 all that sort of stuff really as i said before the tardis play set is literally peak doctor who toys like everything because it's just the ultimate play set the ultimate doctor who toy and you know you can't really beat that and then of course you've got the uh cyber control and guard set which i think really showed what was to come really in 2007 and stuff with sort of more multi-packs and new characters being within them sort of thing and that whole start of really the huge juggernaut year of the uh, doctor who merchandise yeah there was a lot of repacks looking at 2006 but overall despite that it does seem like it was pretty even across the board for in terms of how much new stuff they added or little changes that they made to keep it pretty fresh and vibrant. I feel like for the first legitimate year of producing action figures, character options knocked it out of the park. It was some solid characters, solid aliens, great toys, and I'm sure many people have great memories about them. And we also want to hear your guys' stories about some of these toys from back in the day. Let us know on YouTube or Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, any social media page about your memories of some of these Doctor Who toys and how you got them, where you got them, what happened to them. Did, were you like Jack and you just blew them up or destroyed them or <laughs> anything like that? But ultimately, the goal of this podcast is to do a retrospective on Doctor Who collecting and toys as a whole and really just talk about the memories that we associate with these wonderful, wonderful figures that character options made. I'd like to thank Jack for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's been fun as always. I'd also like to thank Alex for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And last but not least, I'd like to thank you, the audience members, for listening to our podcast. If you enjoyed it, be sure to share it with your friends, and also be sure to like and subscribe. This is legitimately only the beginning, and we have big things planned. The goal of this podcast series is to cover the history of of all Doctor Who figures and toys. So be sure to stay tuned for more. I'm your host, Wade, and this is the Parliament of the Daleks. Thing that cyber leader has is a pointing finger and which yeah is- oh i was just gonna say that i love his finger yep on my display right now i actually have him with his arm up in the air and he's like pointing at like midair it's really cool that's gonna be a sound boy i love his finger <laughs>